What's going on guys, my name is Renegade, today we're here to ask and answer the question, how good is Naval Commander class? Now, Naval Commander class is a support class, so please bear with me if I if I get anything wrong or if I muck some stuff up in this video, I've never actually done a support class video before, so uh, this is all new to me. But um, yeah, so if you don't know how this series works, basically what I do is I get a class, I explain um, how to get it, I explain what the enhancements are, what weapon range to use sometimes, um, I explain how to use the class, like what combo and stuff, and then I explain um, or I give my own opinion on the class and how well it fulfills its uh, designated purpose. And in this case it's Naval Commander so we're going to be looking at it, how good it is for support. Uh, now if you want to leave any suggestions for future How Good Is videos, I am looking to do heaps more of these videos in the future, so if you are interested in seeing a particular class, then make sure you leave me a suggestion in the comment section down below, and uh, leave an upvote on any suggestions that you like. Without any further ado though, let's get into this week's How Good Is video. Okay, so for the first part of this video, we'll talk about how to obtain Naval Commander. So once a year, around the 19th of September, whichever Friday usually comes after the 19th of September, or sometimes before, um, there will be an event in AKW called Talk Like a Pirate Day event, and in that event, Quibble will return to the game, and with him he brings his rares shop. Now in his rares shop you'll see two options to purchase Naval Commander. There is a 2000 AC option and a 100,000 gold option. 2000 AC option can be purchased by any player, and the 100,000 gold option can be purchased by members only. Now, the both variants of the class are identical, they both have the same ability, same passives, all that, so you don't have to worry about it, but yeah, if you're a member, you can get it for gold, and if you're a non-member, then you have to buy it with ACs. Okay, so there are two situations where you want to be using this class. There's farming and there's soloing, and varying degrees of both will require differing enhancements. So I'm just going to lay down the facts and you guys can make up your mind on which enhancement you want to use in each situation, and also explain like what situation might require each enhancement. So, um, basically there are two options for this class. You can go with luck or you can go with fighter enhancements. Luck enhancements give you increased damage over fighter enhancements, but you have reduced health and reduced healing. Fighter enhancements have reduced damage, but you get more health and more healing. Now, keep in mind, Naval Commander uses a mechanic where you have a tanking ability. Now, the tooltip for this um, ability is um, a strike dealing light damage, which is increased for each player in your party, that forces the target to attack you for 8 seconds and decreases the target's damage by 25% for 6 seconds. So, that's a tanking mechanic, so fighter enhancements will make this mechanic in particular better. Um, it's really a toss up though, because most fights in AKW aren't difficult, so you really don't need tanking in the game. Nor do you need a stronger heal than what the luck enhancements give you. The heal on luck enhancements is quite strong anyway, it's like 230 HOT and it's pretty much loopable. So all in all, really just make your own mind up, if you're struggling, if you know the fight's going to be hard, um, whether this applies to farming or bossing, um, then if you know it's going to be hard, then I'd recommend you go fighter enhancements. But if you know the fight's going to be easy and you just want to get more damage so you can get the fight done quicker, then use luck. It really does depend though on the situation and it's best for you to, th you to look at the situation and go, right, hard fight or easy fight. That's pretty much it. Keep in mind, 99% of players are going to look at every situation and think to themselves, this fight's easy. Background gameplay, I was solo I wasn't soloing, I was fighting Desolich with my guild, and uh, we had like a couple of other support classes there as well, but I was able to use luck enhancements, um, and I probably could have just used them regardless, even if I didn't have uh, other support classes there, because even Desolich doesn't do enough damage to justify me using fighter enhancements. Alright, let's talk about how to use this class, its passives, and the combo and stuff. So, first of all, you have your three passives. You've got two rank fours and one rank ten. You've got a crit, a crit chance is increased by 10%. Your haste is increased by 10%, which will also reduce your cooldown, so keep that in mind. Um, and also, your rank ten passive is called Reinforced Hull, and it uh, increases your damage resistance by 15%. So, you've got pretty good rank four and rank ten passives there. Now, your abilities themselves, ability number two, so one being your auto attack, it's just standard, but 2 is called Strike and Parry. It consumes 15 mana, has a 10 second cooldown. Uh, a strike dealing light damage which is increased for each member in your party that forces the target to attack you for 8 seconds and decreases the target's damage by 25% for 6 seconds. Now in theory, 
Uh, it's hard to test this, but in theory, this ability should act as a um, as like a tanking ability, right? It forces the target to to attack you for eight seconds. Now, with your haste buff you get, this is a loopable ability. It's a ten percent increase on your passive, but also there's another ability in this class which increases your haste by fifteen percent. So, using that ability in particular, which does the extra haste increase, you can actually loop this ability. So Naval Commander is a tank. It's actually genuinely a tank. So if you're fighting a boss or a monster that does lots of damage, then you can actually use Naval Commander to tank that damage. Now in practice, certain monsters, certain situations, to certain times, this ability will bug out and it won't actually force the monster to attack you and you alone. Um, but keep just a good rule of thumb, just a good way to remember what this ability does is it this ability will drastically reduce the amount of damage your teammates take. That's one thing to remember and to take away. A couple of times in the background gameplay, Desolich did a really big strike and it only affected me. It barely ever affected anyone else and I think it only affected in, uh, someone else in the background gameplay when um, I didn't have this ability applied. So you can pretty much rely on this class and this ability to tank damage for your teammates. Whether it's 100% of it, like the tooltip would imply, or not, you, all you need to remember is this, this ability will tank a lot of damage. Now your next ability is called Flintlock Barrage. It consumes 15 mana and has a 6, six second cooldown. A strike dealing moderate damage to 4 targets, increased for each member in your party. All targets hit will suffer a haste reduction of 20% for 4 seconds. So, 6 second cooldown, the 4 second thing, that's pretty much loopable because of, like I said, the 2 haste buffs you can get. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a it's a it's just a big, big amount of damage, pretty much. Um, varying depending on your enhancements and your uh, party size and your level. So no point in me mentioning, mentioning numbers there, just have a look at the numbers on screen, I suppose, and you can get a rough idea of what sort of damage this class does anyway. But this generally does a decent amount of damage, like 3-4k crit sort of thing, um, at least for me. Now your next ability is called Commander's Rally, 25 mana, 12 second cooldown. The presence of the captain inspires everyone in battle, it gives a 6 second, sorry, it gives 6 players a heal over time and a 15% increase to their haste for 8 seconds. So this is that extra haste buff I was talking about. It also increases your chance to dodge by 30% for 8 seconds. So keep in mind the haste buff and the heal are, is applied for 8 seconds. Now this ability actually is loopable. It's just loopable when you when you consider the haste buff of both your passive and this ability here. So if I'm, I'm in game right now, if I click it, I can just make it to, uh, to loop the heal. So if I click quickly, there we go, and it's looping, 100%. So that's really, really cool. You can get a loopable heal that is applied to six people at once, and you know, also got a haste buff as well, which is really good. So your last ability is just a big nuke. It's called Flintlock, Flintlock Fury, 30 mana, 15 second cooldown. It deals a large amount of damage to four targets, increased for each member in your party. Also has a 50% chance to stun your opponents for three seconds. So this ability, it's a big nuke. It does more damage than ability number three. Um, not that much more though, it has double mana consumption and more than double cooldown though, so keep that in mind, I guess. Alright, so let's, let's there's a, it's a bit difficult to, to explain a combo for this class, there's not really a combo to use, but what I will tell you is that in uh, farming situations, um, because this class has so much AoE, you can actually do quite well. Um, it's not a bad farming class at all. It's pretty good as a farming class. Um, you gotta have a full party, obviously, which is pretty hard to achieve um, most of the time. Um, you can log in alt accounts or whatever, or just invite random people. And it's not that. It's not too hard to get a full party generally. But um, just as like a general rule of thumb, it's best to have a full party when farming with this class. So when farming, use three and five for big damage. Five you can probably just use hastily because it's it's quite a mana heavy um, ability. But generally when you're farming, you actually regain mana at a pretty steady pace anyway. It's still pretty pretty bad mana management, but it's better than when you're when you're bossing. Now, the thing is about Naval Commander is it's a it's a it's a support class. So, the main utility behind this class is to support your teammates and to tank for them. When is that applicable? Well, it's really only mainly applicable in bossing situations. So Naval Commander is kind of obsolete when it comes to farming. It does have mana management issues, so it is kind of shitty at farming. Um, whereas we look at bossing and it turns into a whole different story. It actually just completely changes the way you have to play the game. Um, a lot of people will, will, won't like the way you have to play as Naval Commander when bossing, but I personally find it pretty cool and it's really unique. So 
Your first ability, well, your uh, your second ability rather, your tanking ability, it reduces the amount of damage your teammates take and it puts it all on you. So you are taking a lot of damage, but in that same sense, you're healing yourself a lot as well, so it doesn't really matter. Um, even when fighting Desolate, I was still doing like okay, so like it wasn't that big of a deal. Um, but you really want to be using two and four a lot when you're bossing and using three and five sparingly. You're not really trying to deal damage. Your objective when using Naval Commander in a boss fight, which is, like I said, the main priority for Naval Commander, main purpose is using support mechanics in a boss fight, you really want to be using three and five sparingly. They just consume too much mana to justify using them over the, your tanking and your support mechanics. So, two, th four is pretty much, you pretty much want to spam that constantly. Um, mana consumption is a big problem when bossing with this class, so maybe sparingly use two or four, just get a feel for what's happening. Are you taking a lot of damage? Are your teammates taking a lot of damage? Use two a lot and maybe sparingly use four. Um, are your teammates doing okay? Do they need a haste buff? Use four a lot and maybe sparingly use two. Just you get a general feel for it, it's not too hard to use, it's only two abilities, so you can kind of get a feel for what you're doing anyway, um, but generally Farming, 3 and 5, although I wouldn't recommend using this class for farming. Bossing, 2, 4, don't really use 3 and 5. It's a pretty, pretty simple class to use, actually. Okay, so my my review section of this video, which is now, will it's a, it's a bit weird because this class is an amazing class. I love this concept of a class so much. There needs to be more of these in the game. There needs to be more classes that tank and heal your teammates and give you your teammates more effects and all that sort of thing. Just general cooperation between classes is just an amazing thing that I just hope AE continues or will do more of in the game. It's an amazing, amazing concept. Love this class so much. Unfortunately, for it being that useful, it's not very useful at all. Um, it, come, it boils down to a problem I've brought up in many videos before, and it, it is that if a class doesn't deal lots of damage and have a self-heal, then it's kind of just shit and worse than other options. What's the point in using Naval Commander when you can just use something like Legion Doom Knight or, you know, something that deals more damage? Now, I know a lot of people don't have those options at hand, so I guess Naval Commander is a good option for you if you are entering a fight and you don't really have like a good damage dealing class, but that's a very niche situation. Most people in the game do have a decent Solomon class, like Legion Doom Knight, like Blackcaster, like Artifact Hunter, and at the end of the day, at the, at the end of the day um, this is a paid class, right? You have to have membership or ACs, so anyone who's going to buy membership or have ACs, you're pretty much going to be looking towards classes that are better value for money, and unfortunately, um, Lightcaster is much better value for money in, in AKW's current meta? Not really, there's not really a good word to use in, in terms of AKW and AKW's current um, ecosystem. Lightcaster is just better value for money. It's half as many ACs, and it's, uh, it's seasonal at, at about the same time each year, and um, it's it's just better, better value. I mean, you're getting more out of it. Uh, me personally, what, what do I prefer? I prefer Naval Commander. Naval Commander is a great class, amazing concept. I'm hugely, hugely impressed with just what this class can do and what it does for your teammates and just, just the interaction between players that it just forces in team fights is amazing. Us fighting Desolish together might not have been possible if I didn't have Naval Commander, but that's that's the point. It probably would have been fine if I didn't have Naval Commander, and as a result, me using Legion Doom Knight or Void High Lord or something like that probably would have been better. At the end of the day, I'm bored out of my mind when, I, when I'm using Naval Commander, when I'm using Void High Lord, whether I'm using Legion Doom Knight or whatever. So, what it comes down to for me at least is I'm going to be bored out of my mind make, doing this fight, so which class is going to get it done quicker so I can be bored out of my mind for less time? And unfortunately, Naval Commander isn't even close to that option. Void High Lord is the option for me. So, and for other people, you've probably got a class that deals more damage than this. So as a result, it's kind of a bit redundant, but in a situation where AKW made bosses that were actually difficult and you would require a class like this, that would be interesting. If they made a boss that hit so hard that you needed a tank, or they made a boss that was just so just difficult and did so much weird shit that you needed a class that could support and tank like this, then that would be amazing. Uh, like, um, Naval Commander would be great for that, but unfortunately those situations are either very few in AKW or just don't exist full stop. So, in a future where AKW made hard boss fights, then 
pull out Naval Commander and you'll have a great time. It does a lot for your team and it really does support your teammates really well. But unfortunately, it doesn't really have much use in AKW's current ecosystem because AKW doesn't really require a support class, you know what I mean? Most people have self heals, most people can just, you know, are fine without a support. And as a result, because Naval Commander's damage is so low, it's like, why even bother? Anyway though, that's rant over. Overall, love Naval Commander. Would I recommend getting it? No way. Not really that useful, but if you if you are interested in having it and just you are a member, it's, I mean, it's it's worth it for 100,000 gold, 100%, but not for the 2000 ACs at all. Um, but yeah, it's, I mean, it's just, it's just not useful. But, uh, either way though, guys, I hope you guys did enjoy. If you want to continue the discussion any further in the comment section down below, if you disagree with my opinion, if you think AKW is really fun and you prefer using Naval Commander over something else, then by all means let me know. I've got a very warped perspective in the sense that I hate AKW, so, uh, I hate playing AKW anyway. So I'm going to find any class boring unless it's Card Clasher. So, anyway though, hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.